Hello, I am Dustin Payette of Good Morning Artist, and this is the history of Prussian Blue. The color blue amongst the history of painting is a relatively new luxury. Although we can find uses of blue pigment made from the mineral lapis lazuli in Buddhist paintings as far back as the 6th century, it was not commonly found in paintings until the 14th and 15th centuries when lapis lazuli was imported to European nations like Italy and France. This period, of course, was the Renaissance. The blue hue created with the mineral lapis lazuli became known as ultramarine or ultramarinus in Latin meaning beyond the sea as it could only be found and imported from one place, Afghanistan. All of this made acquiring the color blue for painting very expensive, even as expensive as gold. This, of course, led to rules from the church, excluding its use to only the most holy, like the Virgin Mary. A third problem remained with ultramarine in that it has a very low light fastness. This meant when it was exposed to light over long periods of time, the blue can quickly fade. This left the artist boxed in when it came to how they used such a basic and important color as blue. All this made the environment in the art world ripe for a new blue. In the beginning of the 18th century, with a bit of luck, Prussian blue was discovered. Now the world's artists could begin to express themselves fully dripped in the mood of blue. In 1704, the Berlin-based chemist and color maker, Johann Jacob Deichbach, was attempting to make a batch of Red Lake dye. That's when a mistake took place, and his mixture of iron sulfate and potash was contaminated with some animal oil. Instead of a brilliant red, he gets a glimmering purple, and after concentrating it, he finds that it is a deep, pure blue. Oops, I just changed the world. This was the first modern artificially colored paint made with chemistry. Now, all artists across the globe could begin to exploit this new blue for all its power. And by 1710, artists in the Prussian court were already using it extensively. Before the mid-century, it traveled to France, Italy, Japan, and the rest of the world is painted blue. Prussian blue is also versatile. It can be used as a base for oil and water-based paints and fabric dyes and has been used often for uniforms. You will also recognize this hue when you look at architectural blueprints and metal dye. It can even be used medically and is useful as a sequestering agent for toxic metals. Wow! That is truly amazing. Prussian blue is sometimes known as Turnbull's blue or you may remember it better as Midnight Blue in your Crayola crayon set. In 1958, Crayola decided to change the name of its Prussian blue crayon to Midnight Blue, prompted by American teachers who complained their students were not familiar with the history of Prussia. You wonder, as teachers, why they couldn't have just taught the students about Prussia. <laughs> but what do I know? I'm positive they had just more important things to teach their students. But as for me, I especially appreciate what the color has done for painters. Finally, they have a blue they can afford and can easily transport with them anywhere. They can even fill their entire canvas with it. Some of the most famous paintings and prints ever are inspired by the glorious hues of Prussian blue, like Hokusai's The Great Wave of Kanagawa, and Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night, or Picasso's Blue Period. The more you look around, the more you might notice that wonderful deep hue invented only three centuries ago, Prussian blue. You know what? For some reason, I feel like painting now. Thank you, artists, for watching this video. If you like what you watch, please subscribe below right now. Keep those sketchbooks out and see you next time.